Let's bring in two luminaries in the Apple galaxy. We'll start with Philip Shoemaker. He's the founding director of Apple's App Store. Philip, here's when Meta turned negative, when they showed that the headset made by Apple can be controlled by your hands, your eyes, and your voice. What do you make of this? Give me your gut reaction. It's amazing, right? I mean, the controllers were always one of these things that you had to hunt around, especially if you put one down on the MetaQuest, you'd be hunting around for it blinded, right? Because you've got something blocking your eyes. So the ability to be able to leverage all this with your voice, your eyes and your hands, I mean, it's, it's a game changer. It's a game changer for the industry. Game changer for the industry. And let's give people some breaking news here. Uh, apparently hundreds of apps are going to be available as soon as the actual product becomes available. Spatial FaceTime, voices can come out FaceTime and they will come out from the tiles. So I think what's interesting here is it's anything, at least if Apple is promoting this, it's anything but isolating because you can actually see through it. What kind of advantage does it give it over all the other headsets that might be out there? It, you know, it's extremely painful playing with the meta uh, devices when they didn't have that pass through, right? Pass through to me makes everything different because you can easily just with one click, with one movement, you can clear the, the way behind you so you're not totally immersed. You can see people walking around you. You're not tripping over furniture. Right? That's one of the big things when, when everything's blinded is that you, you can't see your surroundings and people fall over and crash into walls. So look, it's, I think it's a big thing and uh, it's going to be really exciting to start playing with this thing. Price, everybody. We've got the price. 3000 Four hundred and ninety nine dollars. That's a full three grand more than Meta's Quest three. Uh, is that going to be prohibitive? Do you think, Philip, when you're considering the fact that we are heading into a slight economic slowdown here? Yeah, that price is really difficult to swallow, right? The fifteen hundred price tag uh, from from previous devices were OK. The five hundred price tag four ninety five that, that Meta has right now is nice. But uh, but Apple's got to get that price down. And, you know, the form factor, it, it's it's a higher price for a variety of reasons, especially the size. That's the biggest issue is that they will over time. Right. Moore's law. We will ultimately get thinner and faster and the price will come down. Well, that's going to be a few years down the road. So, yeah, I think it is a difficult pill to swallow. But this is the exciting thing is that Apple always makes premium products. They don't mind having a premium price tag. And developers will go out there and buy it because they ultimately see this thing skyrocketing. And so developers are going to get their hands on it for $3,500 and start making magic. Mm. Okay, Philip, stand by. We're bringing in Horace Dediu. He is an analyst at a Simco. He's considered by Fortune to be the ultimate Apple analyst. Horace, give me your gut reaction and your thoughts to this new Vision Pro, which, by the way, everybody thought it was going to be called the Reality Pro. Not the name. Vision Pro, $3,499. Absolutely amazing product. I, I stood just watching it live here with about 500 other developers, and there was there was a, a palpable sense of excitement uh, and electricity in the crowd as as we saw the feature reveal, especially eyesight. That was really a surprise for a lot of people. There were rumors, but nobody really believed they could pull it off. Uh, the the vision name is brilliant. The price is a little bit high. That was a bit of a shock, I think. But uh, again, the audience is developers right now. There's 30 million in the world developing for Apple. So I think plenty of those are going to buy this product right, uh, right off the bat. OK, the developers, let's talk about them. You know, we're waiting to see. Now, apparently more than 100 are going to be ready with different apps once this thing is out on the market. And again, this is just moving at the moment. We're trying to figure out when actually it's going to be available. Uh, this is a little unusual, Horace, because it's almost like Apple is saying it might be a little buggy. This is sort of the first attempt. So we're going to be working on this. That, that doesn't usually happen with Apple, which loves to put out a pristine and perfect product. Absolutely the opposite. You're right. Uh, what's happening is here that we're seeing a platform get born. And Apple has learned this lesson from Microsoft. You've got to bring in the apps and the killer apps are going to be developed by mm -hmm. developers, not Apple itself. Uh, so rather than seeding the market with millions of products and getting developers so interested in that platform because so many users are there, it's doing the opposite. It's actually going to look for 
thousands of developers build a compelling apps and then bringing in the millions of users. This is kind of, again, the, the, the rule book or the, uh, or the playbook for, for Microsoft's historic development process. Uh, it is an interesting uh, decision they made, especially in contrast to Meta, which kind of goes the other way. Uh -huh. But I think it's the right decision because it's actually, uh, nobody knows the killer apps. And I think the imagination and creativity of millions of developers are going to actually discover this, as happened with the iPhone, where the killer apps turned out to be social media that didn't exist in 2008. Gotcha. Um, Philip, Disney shares also made a big move. If we can show an intraday of Disney, you can see they began to move higher in a volume spike, which I think is really interesting here. Bob Iger suddenly becomes one of the featured guests during the Worldwide Developers Conference. He comes out swinging and saying, Disney Plus will be immediately available upon the launch of Vision Pro. What does that mean? I mean, it just shows that Apple really had its act together here as it wanted to make sure it checked a bunch of boxes that would make this something that people, at least if they have the money, would be able to scoop up. Yeah, that's right. And, and Tim and Bob have had a longstanding relationship and so this makes a lot of sense for this to happen. But, you know, the, the announcement is, is, uh, is great, especially because there's still a lot of work to be done on the device. But this allows Apple to start being able to bring this uh, uh, through TSA. You know, they hand carry these to all the developers for them to, to introduce it to them and have them start playing with it. You know, the, the special developers get their hands on it. So this makes, this announcement has made it a lot easier for Apple to be able to go from developer to developer to show them the product and get their, their support. And we're just going to see more and more of this over the course of the next few months. Mm. Could we show again the video where the, where the uh, demonstrator is using her, her touch? Because you don't have controllers in your hands, like with the Quest 3. You use only your vision, your touch, and your voice, your, your fingers. You know, it's like a hand signal here. And as you look at this, apparently it is going to be available starting next year. Uh, so it's it's going to be a while before these things start coming off the assembly line. So, Horace, give us your best shot on what it does for the stock in the, I guess, the six-month term. Six months, I don't think we'll see a lot because we do expect the developers to be working in the next few months to try to come up with the sort of the launch suite of products uh, or, or apps. Uh, I do think, however, the market is going to come around to realizing that Apple is on the cusp of dominating yet another user interface. That they, you know, they mentioned that when when the mouse came, uh, it was about the Mac OS. When touch came, it was about the iOS. And now, when we have 3D immersive experiences, we're talking about Vision OS. So the emphasis on on the OS. I think as as the developers begin also hinting at what they're working on. Uh, we're going to see a, a reaction, a positive reaction overall. A lot of sort of cynicism is going to fade. And I do believe a lot of the enthusiasm we've seen already is, is, is going to come back and, and we're going to see a climb yet again in, in enthusiasm and optimism for this share. Uh, this stock is, is probably going to reach new highs in the next six months. Well, it, it certainly did intraday. The intraday high, $184.95. It has now pulled back by about 1.5% to $178 and change. Gentlemen, great to have your vision and your perspective on this brand new Vision Pro, which is, boy, that is, that is one hell of a price point. Three times more than three times what you know the the quest is over at the meta uh, labs so what we see here is three thousand four hundred and ninety nine dollars for this thing i'll be really interested to see how many people step up to buy that